The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Did you ever stop to realize that you don't have to be rich to build sound plans for your future and the future of your family? The secret is in knowing how. And this secret you can learn from a friendly, helpful man who knows the answers to your problems. He is your local Equitable Society representative. He can show you how you can predict your future needs and plan to take care of your family no matter what happens. In about 14 minutes, I want to tell you more about your local Equitable Society representative and how he can help you, too, enjoy the many advantages of membership in the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Armed Robbery. Its title, The 16mm Stick-Up. One of your FBI's most important jobs is the selection of recruits to be trained as special agents. The screening process to which all applicants are subjected is extremely exacting. Of the men desiring to become agents, only a small proportion can meet the requirements. All FBI men must be in top physical condition. They must possess poise, tact, judgment, and resourcefulness. Naturally, they must be men of character and integrity. They must be well-educated and have a knowledge of legal procedures. But beyond all this, they must have the mental alertness to think fast on their feet, adapt their knowledge to new situations, for no crime ever follows the same pattern. Each, as tonight's case illustrates, is a challenge for the men of your FBI. Tonight's FBI file opens in a car that is driving slowly through the factory district of a large eastern city. A man is seated behind the wheel. A girl is seated beside him, reading a newspaper. Frank. Hmm? Will we get to the track in time for the second trade? I don't know. There's a horse here called Paul's Dream. I gotta play him. It's a hunch. My sister used to go with a fella named Paul... He was all the time having dreams. <laughs> that sounds very scientific. What are you slowing down for? We're stopping you. What? I'm going to take your picture. What? Let's get out, Irene. Well, are you serious? Yeah, i got my movie camera right here. Oh, but what about the track? Don't you want to have your picture taken? Well, sure, but... Then just stand right over there by that lamppost. You did the silliest thing. It won't take long. Is it color film? Uh-uh. Well... I'll fix my makeup anyway. No, don't bother. Hmm. Okay. Say, Frank, are you taking the picture from there? Yeah. Well, with that half-finished building in the background? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, couldn't I stand in front of something better than that? No, just stay right where you are. Okay. You taking it now? Uh Uh-huh. Should I wave or something? Like this? Fine. Well, how about if I, I was... Well, maybe bull kiss it. Great. Now I'll spin around like... Open my coat? Terrific. <laughs> Frank, I can't think of anything else. Now, you're doing swell. i just hold it there another few seconds. Ah, that's it. It's all over? Uh-huh. When will they be developed, Frank? Next week. Hope they turn out good. I got some news for you, honey. You're not even in them. Will you have another drink, Bill? No, thanks. Jack? I'm okay. 
Hey, Irene, what's with Frank? What's he doing? He's fixing something in the next room. Well, what's the store? I thought he asked us here to talk about a job. He did. Well, where's the action? Well, Hiya, he fellas. wants to... Hi, Frank. Frank. Uh, come on in here, will you? Okay. Sure. Me too, Frank? Yeah, come on, Irene. Go ahead, go ahead. Thanks. Hey, what goes in here? I want to show you guys something. Hey, what's that thing? A movie projector. What's it for? I'm going to show you some pictures. Hey, what is this? I thought we came here to talk business. This is part of the business. Uh, put the lights out, will you, Irene? Sure. Are these the ones you took last week, Frank? The ones I'm not in? Uh-huh. Uh, let me give you a short run down here first, fellas. Now, this is a job I've been casing for the last four weeks. It's a payroll job. I want you to watch it very closely. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, now, this first picture is an alleyway. The uh, construction job on the right is a big factory that's being put up. Now, I took a picture of the alley because that's where we're going to park the getaway car. You'll be driving, Jack. Okay. All right, now, this view is the whole building. Uh, you see that little shack there on the right? Uh-huh. That's where they handle the payroll. That line of guys there now are getting paid off. Now, there's one guard on the job on payday, which is Friday. That line forms at 11.30 sharp. The guard starts at the shack and works down the line checking badges. I've gotten two badges. You'll be wearing one bill, and I'll wear the other. Okay. All right, now, next Friday, we'll be at the head of that line. The whistle blows when they start paying off. Jack, when you hear the whistle, you move the car out of the alley and start slowly down the street. Mm -hmm. By that time, we'll be in the shack. You park behind that big pile of bricks there. Yeah. That'll give us cover. Now, by the time you're there, Bill and I will have knocked off the payroll. We'll hop out then and join you in the car. And that's the story. That sounds real good, Frank. It'll work. How big is the payroll? Around 30000 Hey. I'll run it over again so you remember good. Hey, wait. Look. There I am. I'm in the picture after all. This is okay, Frank. Right at the head of the line. I told you we would be. Only two guys in the shack. Yeah, I know. Well, this is it. All right, you guys, come ahead. Let's go. Okay. All right, you boys, over here. Yes, sir. What's your name? Sheffield. Badge number? Never mind that. This is a stick-up. Huh? Cover them, Bill. Right. All right, give me those envelopes. Come on. Slap them in the back. Uh, look here. You got to... How you doing? Okay. Anybody help outside yet? No, not yet. All right, give me that bundle, too, mister. Uh -huh. All right, here. You nearly done? Yeah. This does it. All right, now listen to me, both of you guys. Keep your trap shuttle. We're out of here. Do you hear me? Okay, okay. Let's go. Wait a minute. Who do you think you're shoving me? We're on this pile of bricks, Bill. Is that the car there? Yeah. Everything okay? Yeah, get going. Trouble? Uh, it was a breeze. I'll cover the back. Okay. Here, Bill, hold the money back there. Right. How much did you get? The works. Hey, the payroll guy's just coming out in the street. He hasn't even... Jack, look out for the cab. He's making a left in front of you. Yeah. Well, do something, will you? You stupid. You okay, Frank? Yeah. But we got to get out of this heat. Hey, wait, fellas. My, my, my leg. Hey. Hey, there's a cop on the corner there. Let's blow. Don't leave me, fellas. We're all on our own. Leave me in my apartment. Hey, Frank, the cop pulling his gun. Yeah, scatter. Hey, wait, you guys. Wait. Several miles from the scene of the stick-up, at an FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just giving a report on this daring job to a fellow agent. And it looked as if they were going to get away clean, Walt, until a cab accidentally cut in front of the getaway car. Two cars crashed, the stick-up men abandoned theirs and made a run for it. This was just a block from the scene of the stick-up? Yeah, that's right. What happened then, Jim? Well, there was a policeman on the corner. He called out to the men, ordered them to halt. When they didn't, he fired. Oh, any results? Killed one of them. Believes he wounded another. The second man, however, still made a getaway along with the third. How about the money? Well, unfortunately, one of the two men who escaped still has it. Well, uh, how do we come into the case, Jim? 
The car that was used had out-of-state license plates from Michigan. This gives us a basis to help the local authorities. Checkup showed that the car had been stolen, too. Oh, I see. The man who was killed was the driver. Any ident on him? I don't know, Walt. The body was taken to the morgue. I'm going down there now and pick up his fingerprints and check his effects. Is it? Me, Bill. Oh, just a minute. You alone? Yeah. Well, where's Jack and Frank? I don't know. What do you mean? What happened? Just let me sit down. Huh? Where are they? Bill, where are they? We all scattered. We were all to meet back here. I don't think Jack's going to make it. Why not? He got shot. Bad. Last I seen him, he was stretched out on the street. What about Frank? He, he got away okay. Well, did the job go bad? No, no, that, that worked okay. After we got the dope pulling away, we ran into a cab. Oh. Yeah. Cop seen us when we made the break. He started shooting. Say, what's wrong with you? Help me get my coat off. I ain't... Ooh. I got hit, too. Where? Here. The chest. Pull that sleeve, huh? Yeah. Gee. You're bleeding bad, huh? Yeah, kind of. We better call a doctor or something. No, no dice. Well, if you're bleeding well, like that, you got help me. Huh? Put me in a bedroom. Let me lay down a while. Sure, Bill. Now here. Yeah. Now, now you just lean on me. Now you okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. What about the money? We got that okay. Has Frank got it? No, no. I took. I stashed it away. I didn't want to carry it around. Oh. How did you get here bleeding like that? It didn't start to get bad till just before I got here. Uh, now, just let me lay down right here. Sure. Uh, no. uh, there you uh, are. I'll, I'll go get some towels and stuff and fix you up. Jim, uh, did you go to the morgue? Just came from there, Walt. The police have been working. They contacted the Michigan State Police, gave them a complete description of the man who was killed. Mm-hmm. They seem to think it was a man named Jack Kingston. He had a long criminal record. I got a set of his fingerprints and sent them on to the Bureau in Washington. Well, did the Michigan police have any idea who Kingston's associates might be here? No. No, they didn't, Walt. They're checking on that now. Though. How about the paymaster at the construction job? Was he able to identify the other two hold-up men? Well, he's down at headquarters now looking over pictures... He didn't remember them too well, though, so that may not lead to anything. Yeah, well, was there anything found on Kingston that might help? Well, the only thing that might be important is a note. I got it here. Uh, go to Irene's apartment on 12th Street, pick her up and have her bring her movie projector to my place. Mm, any signature? No. Note's written on the back of an envelope which originally contained snapshots from the Argosy camera shop. Oh, I see. They're down on Grand Street. Yeah, yeah, I know Envelope has a number on it. So I'm going to go over to the camera shop now and see if they have any record of the name of the person these pictures were developed for. I went there. I was there on time. Bill. Blue suit always wears blue suit. Bill. Oh. Bill, listen. Uh, what? Don't you think we should get a doctor? Turn the boy up and down, up and down. Raise you to the corner. Bill, will you listen to me? Uh, you need a doctor real bad. Water. Uh, Give me some water, huh? Some water? I'm sure, oh, Bill, sure. Water. Uh, I'll be right back. Everybody can swim with me. All the guys are real good swimming. Who is it? Me. Frank. Oh. Oh, Frank, I'm so glad to see you. Anybody get here? Yeah, Bill. Where is he? He's in the bedroom. He's in bad shape, Frank. He got shot and he's bleeding real Never bad. Never mind that. Did he bring the dough? No, he didn't. Well, what happened to it? He said he stashed it away. He didn't want to carry it around. I got to talk to him. I'll get him a glass of water. He's been saying right along how thirsty he was. Yeah? What is it? Where did Bill stash the dough? I don't know. 
Well, didn't you ask him? No. Why, you blubberhead. Well, ask him yourself. I can't, stupid. He's dead. Return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. You've heard the old saw, money is the root of all evil. Well, it isn't true. If you know how to use money wisely, it's good. For example, almost anybody with an average income can provide for the future security of his family. You don't have to be rich to make sure your wife and your children will be well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed until the youngest child has graduated from high school. To provide such protection on a small salary was the problem of Mr. Henry Trent until he became a member of the Equitable Society. How did the Equitable solve your problem, Mr. Trent? I figured out that Social Security isn't enough to take care of a family. That worried me. And then I heard you describe a plan that would keep my wife and family comfortable if something happened to me. That's the Equitable Family Security Plan. That's correct. So I called up our local Equitable man, and the first thing he did was call and give me a chart. He showed how this chart helped me figure out how much more I'd need in addition to Social Security to protect my family. That's the famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. The chart was a big help. And the bigger help was the friendly advice and counsel our Equitable man gave me. He sure is a fine man to do business with. He's reliable. Yes, equitable representatives are reliable. You can count on them to be honest, helpful, and friendly, and to know the answers. They know insurance from A to Z. So, if you have any insurance problems, consult your local equitable representative. Ask him for your copy of the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. No charge or obligation. Simply consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local equitable society representative. You'll be glad you did. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to tonight's FBI file, the 16-millimeter stick-up. A taxi cab makes a sudden left turn. An accident. The results? New leads for the FBI agents. New problems for the criminals to meet. Fortunately, these unexpected turns of fortune often upset the so-called perfectly planned crime. But as in tonight's case, they don't usually provide the complete solution. The answer lies in the agent's ability to take advantage of a break or delays may be costly, both for the agents and the criminals. It is here that our men have the advantage. Not only do they have intensive training behind them, but also the vast facilities of your whole Federal Bureau of Investigation to give them the help they want, when and where they need it. Tonight's file continues at Frank Jessup's apartment. He is pacing the living room floor. A girl, Irene, sits dejectedly on the sofa. Weeks I spent on this job, weeks, and what have I got to show for it? A great big hunk of nothing. I'm sorry, Frank. You just had brains enough to ask the guy where he stashed the dough. A five-year-old child would have done that. But you always told me not to ask questions. Oh, shut up. I'm trying to think. Not having the dough ain't our only problem. Well, what do you mean? Do they know you did the job? I don't know how bad off Jack was. He might be singing to the cops right now. Oh. That ain't all. We got a stiff in the bedroom, a dead body we got to get rid of. What do we do with him? No, well, let me think. I'm not asking I... you. Give me a cigarette. No, I don't think I have any. Wait, I'll, I'll look in Bill's jacket. I got to figure some way to blow town. I got a hold of some cash in a hurry. There are no cigarettes in his pocket. Nothing but this claim check. What? This here. It's a baggage check. Now, let me see that. Sure. Here. It's from the railroad station. There's a time stamp on it. Hey, he checked something this afternoon. Honey, this is where he stashed the dough. <laughs> Pick 
have that search warrant for me? Yeah, I have it right here. Swell, let's go inside, huh? Say, uh, what's this all about, Jim? I went over to the camera shop, had them check the number on that envelope. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, go ahead, Walt. Yeah, right. Camera shop said the films were left by a man named Jessup. He lives at this address. We go up one flight. Okay. I arrived here. There was no answer. Jessup's apartment. Superintendent gave me a key. I've been waiting around for you with a warrant. Do you think Jessup was one of the stick-up men? According to the superintendent, he answers to his general description. Oh, it's his apartment right over here. Okay. Camera people said he was a regular customer and did a lot of work for him. There we are. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Well, let's take a look around, huh? Right. Hey, look here, Walt. What? Movie projector. Imagine it's the one that was mentioned in that note. Yeah. A whole stack of movie film here, too. Jim, I... look at this. What is it? Jacket. Pretty well soaked with blood. Oh. Ah. There seems to be a bullet hole in it, too. Yeah. Well, let's search the rest of the rooms, huh? Okay. Well, this appears to... Hey. Yeah, I see him. Even from here, I'd say he was dead. Mm-hmm. Well, you think this is Jessup? No. No, he looks nothing like the description. This must be the one who was wounded. we better call the police. Okay. Oh, Walt, suppose you wait here for them, huh? I doubt that the money is here, but they can search for it. I'm going to take those rolls of film back to the office. On in. Well, how are the movies going, Jim? Oh, I'll watch it just in time. Uh, you want to snap off that light? Sure. I want you to see this reel. Okay. These pictures are where the stick-up took place. Oh, you mean this is the way they cased the job? Evidently, yeah. That's the construction job there. Yeah, pretty clever of them. Uh -huh. Oh, by the way, there was uh, no trace of the money at the apartment. I didn't think there would be. One of the men from Homicide identified the body, though. Huh? A man named Bill Winfield. He was involved in another holdup several years ago. Mm hmm. Well, say, is that all there is to this, Jim? A scene of the crime? No. Oh, there's something coming up right about now that should be very helpful. Uh, here it is. Oh, that girl opening up her coat. Yeah. It? She has to be a friend of Jessup's. I'm having a blow-up made of her. Just might be something she's wearing that'll give us a lead on where to pick her up. We find her, we might find Jessup. Frank, I'm over here. Okay. You got the money, huh? Yeah. I thought you said it was in the canvas bag. It was. Where'd you get that suitcase? I bought it in the luggage store. The canvas bag was a giveaway, so let's get going. Where? We got some tickets, then we're blowing out of here. Now? Right now. Oh, Frank, we can't. Why not? Well, I got to go back to my apartment and back. Uh-uh, no good. But I haven't got any clothes. I'll buy you some new ones. Look, I've got a mink coat there, and I'm not leaving it. Honey, we can't take the chance. A mink coat's a mink coat. You can buy the tickets, take me home, and then we'll take the train. <laughs> What's happening, Jim? Well, I just got the enlargements on that girl. They lead yeah. to anything? Yeah, I found out she was the one who was mentioned in the note. Irene? That's right. She has a lapel pin on there. I-R-E-N-E, see? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just found something else here, too, Walt, but I must say I'm a little puzzled by it. What is it? Well, as you can see, she's holding a coat open. You know how many times women have their names written on the inside lining? Yeah, well, there is something on the lining. Yes, but it isn't writing. It's several bars of music. Here, let me look at it. Okay. Here, take your magnifying glass. All right. You read music, Walt? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any melody there? Yeah, I see. It goes, um... Da, da, da... Da, 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 da... Da, 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 da... Uh, well, that's the melody. Sounds familiar. Do that again, will you? Da, da, da. 
Da, 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 hey, wait a minute. Da. Wait a minute. That's an old song called Sweet Lorraine. Walter, her last name could be Lorraine. That note said she lived on 12th Street, so let's get busy. Aren't you finished packing yet? These are the last things. There. That's all. Well, close the bag and let's get out of here. Okay. All right, now, come on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what now? My coat. I almost forgot my coat. Well, hurry, will you? What time does the train leave? Uh, uh, half an hour. There. Now I'm ready. Good. I forgot to ask, where are we going? West. Where west? California. Oh, wonderful. Go ahead. Thanks. Just a minute. Huh? Are you, uh, Irene Lorraine? Yeah, why? Well, then you must be Frank Jess. Who are you? Special agents of the FBI. Oh. Look out, Jim. Yeah. Now, when he comes to, we'd like to talk to you both about some pictures. Frank Jessup was convicted in a federal court for violation of the National Motor Vehicle Theft Act and sentenced to serve a five-year term. He was then turned over to the local authorities for prosecution on robbery charges. The conviction of the two criminals in tonight's case makes you stop and wonder why two such people never learn the futility of crime for profit. That such a career is futile is proven again by the fact that prisons all over the nation are full to the point of being overcrowded. And yet criminals will not learn. They continue to try to commit that perfect crime, but they will not succeed so long as there are law enforcement agencies on the job, agencies like your FBI. Do you envy the man who makes more money than you do? Well, he envies the man who makes more money than he does. The truth is, it isn't how much money you make, but how you handle it. Almost anyone with an average income can do this. He can own his own home free and clear. He can provide for his children's education. He can plan to retire with a comfortable income in his 60s. He can protect his family regardless of what happens to him. How? Ask your equitable representative for the answer. Consult your local telephone directory for the name of this friendly, helpful neighbor your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Homicide. Its title, The Death Cruise. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Louis Alberni, Tony Caruso, Bill Conrad, Herb Ellis, Isabel Jewell, and Henry Morgan. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Death Cruise on This Is Your FBI. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.